Hey everybody, today I want to talk about a strategy that I've personally used to pass a whole bunch of IT certifications. And it doesn't really matter if you're taking it from CompTIA or from Cisco or from Microsoft or from AWS, or if the exam is like a multiple choice or a practical exam, the method still applies. So let's get started. This method is broken down into three different parts, the priming phase, the learning phase, and the polishing phase. So the priming phase is where you get your initial exposure to the new material you're trying to learn. What you need to do for this phase is locate the best possible video series that you can that covers all the necessary exam objectives and topics. So for example, if I wanted to study for and pass CompTIA Security Plus, I would go to Reddit and see what other people are using for their video series and kind of compare the different ones that are mentioned and make my decision based on that. So now that you've got your video series, it's time to start watching. But there's a certain strategy I want you to use as you're watching the videos. As you're watching the videos, don't try to memorize every little thing that's brought up. Instead, put more emphasis on trying to understand the topics as they're presented. For example, if you're watching videos on CompTIA Security Plus and the topic of hashing comes out, instead of trying to remember all the different hashing algorithms and like which ones are deprecated and which ones are still in use today and like what's best practice, instead of worrying about all of that, just try to watch the video and understand like what hashing actually is and like what it's used for. And then once you've reached that level of understanding, that's enough to move on as far as uh, the priming phase goes. Priming just means getting ready for something. So we don't want to go too deep in this phase. We just want to focus on a general understanding of all the topics. So just a quick recap of the priming phase. All we need to do, pick out a really good video series, watch the video series, but don't put a heavy emphasis on memorization. Just make sure you understand the material. And once you've watched all the videos, it's time to move on to the learning phase. So what's going to happen in the learning phase is we're going to further reinforce that kind of general knowledge we got from watching our videos. To do this, we need two things. The first thing being a really good set of practice questions, like practice exam questions with really good explanations for the correct and incorrect answers. And the second thing we need is a free spaced repetition flashcard program called Anki. So in order to find the best practice questions, I would probably use the same strategy I used when trying to find a good video series. Like if I was studying for CompTIA Security Plus, I may go to Google and search something like Best Security Plus Practice Exams 2020. Or you could go to Reddit and just see what other people are using for their exam engine and pick one of those. So going back to Anki real quick, Anki is a smart flashcard application that optimizes the way you learn by showing you more difficult cards more often and showing you the cards that you already know less often. For example, I will show you what it looks like real quick. So this is just, um, this is what Anki looks like. This is just a deck that I made. It has some really dumb cards in it, but it looks like this. The idea is I already loaded the stuff in here that I want to study. I'll show you how to do that um, in just a second. I can say study now, and this is how it works. Um, it will ask you a question, whatever you put in, and you read it. So what color is this text? And if you know the answer, so for example, I know the answer is B in my head. So I'll click show answer. And if I was correct, then I say good, which means I'll see this card one day later. But if I, I didn't know that it was green, for example, I would say again, which means I would be seeing this card in the next 10 minutes or so. So this one, what color is this text? I can think about it, it's blue. And because you notice down here, the time intervals are different. Because I, I already answered this one like a couple days in a row prior to recording this video. So like every time you remember it or every time you get something right, these days are pushed back even further until say one day, like if you forget it and if you say it again, then you'll see the same card in the next 10 minutes. But if you could remember it, but it was a little bit hard, you can say hard, you'll see it six days later. But if it was like super easy, you can say easy, and then you'll see it 22 days later. So basically the idea is we're gonna build a large deck using our practice questions in Anki, and then we're gonna review Anki every day to kind of filter out the cards that are too easy versus the ones that are more difficult, and we'll see the more difficult ones more often. Before we move on, I just wanna say I'm not sponsored by Anki or anything like this. It's just like totally free app that you can download from the internet and anyone can use it. You can also use it for all sorts of other things that are not IT related. For example, I used it to teach myself conversational Japanese. So now I can I can read and write and understand at least a conversational level of Japanese, mostly, mostly from Anki. It's really powerful and it really optimizes the way you learn. So I'd highly recommend it. But anyway, moving on. Now that we have our practice questions in Anki set up, it's time to get to work. 
So this window over here, this just represents our test engine where we can see our different practice questions. And this window here, of course, is Anki. The idea is, as you go through your questions, anything you see in the question that you don't understand, you want to make an individual Anki flashcard out of it. So for example, we look at this question, you're a sysadmin, you must ensure users are allowed to browse the internet from within the corporate network, which ports on the firewall should you allow outbound traffic? So we'll stay, you automatically know the answer to this question is A, but maybe you don't actually know what UDP port 69 is or TCP port 3389 is. Like maybe that's just something that you don't know. So for example, you could come over here to Anki and go to your deck and then you can say add card and the front of the card you might you might do something like um you might say something like udp port blank is typically used for tftp something like this and then in the back you would say 69 for example so udp port blank is typically used for tftp something like this and then say maybe you didn't know um, you didn't know this. You didn't know why D was wrong, for example. So you would pull this out of the question. TCP port blank is used for RDP. Something like this. TCP port 3389. You can also add the whole thing. So for example, just copy this. This. Paste it. However you do screenshots on your system. Copy this and paste this you say add and then when you go to study it in the future okay these not these cards easy easy so for example then you have these new cards that you created in addition to the question that you got from the exam engine so udp port blank is typically used for a tftp and then you you think about what it is if you thought that it was 69 then you can say if it was kind of hard, then you could say good. But if it was super easy, say easy, you'll see it four days later. And if you, you absolutely didn't know, you'll see it like really soon within a minute. TCP port blank is used for RDP. So you think, oh, like what port is it? Oh, it's, I remember TCP 3389. And then if it was easy for you, just say it's easy. And then this is the actual question. If you elect to put it into Anki, you can think about this in your head and be like, uh, oh, I think I remember it's A. It's like, it wasn't too easy, but I could re remember. So you want to say, like, good, for example. And since it's the last card in the deck, you just happen to see it right away. Uh, so if you remember what, what it is, you can say good or easy. And, um, for example, I'll say easy. And I finished all the cards for the day. And I, I won't see any more cards until 24 hours later. So the idea is you go through each one of your individual practice questions here and you see if you can pull out any part of the question and create kind of a new question for yourself in Anki. In the instance, you understand every possible thing there is to understand about this question. Like, you know what all these ports are, you know what, like everything is here. You don't have to make an, an additional Anki card. Um, but if you, if you get the whole question wrong, for example, I would just make a whole new Anki card with the whole question. If you understand, like if you get the question right, but you don't, you don't know what, like, for example, you, you didn't know what like TCP port 389 is or TCP port 3389. That's like another opportunity to pull that stuff out and create a new card in Anki. And basically the idea is you go through all of your practice questions like this and create as many custom Anki cards that you can. And just to give you an idea, when I was studying for a CISSP, which is a really big exam, by the way, I used two or three different test engines for a total of about 4,000 or so practice questions. Like I had 4,000 individual practice questions. And by the time I went through all of those, I created about 2,000 unique Anki cards. Don't let those numbers scare you though. CSSP is really big and really expensive and I didn't want to fail. So I was trying to be extra thorough at the time. But one last thing really quick, if you feel like the test engine you selected didn't quite have enough practice questions, you can always look on Quizlet for user created content. Just be careful because some of the questions or answers on there might be wrong, or maybe they're missing explanations, or maybe the questions are actually like illegally obtained. So just be careful. I just want you to know you can use Quizlet for supplemental questions.
So just a quick recap of the learning phase, you're going to get a nice set of practice questions. You're going to download Anki for free. As you go through the individual practice questions, if there's any part of the question you don't understand, you'll pull that out and make an individual card in Anki with it. If you get the question wrong, go ahead and take the whole question and make an individual card in Anki with it. At the end of this phase, you'll have a full deck of Anki cards that you'll be using for the final phase, the polishing phase. Now we made it to the final phase, the polishing phase. After you've gone through all of your practice questions and then created your kind of Anki flashcard deck, you may end up with something that looks kind of like this. Now all you have to do at this point is go to Anki and just study your deck until you sufficiently learn the material. And you may be asking yourself, like, how do I know when I've sufficiently learned it? So there's like, for me, there's like one of two ways. You can either um, just go through the whole thing until you feel like for me, I start getting bored, like, oh my god, I, I know these already. Uh, and you can just go by your own feeling. Or you can use Anki as kind of built-in indicator. If you go to stats and go to deck, the deck that you're on, and just scroll down. And you can see this card counts thing here. So blue means you haven't you haven't studied the card yet. This light green young means you've studied the card, but it's it's still like really new. Maybe you've seen it only like once or twice or something. And when they turn this dark green color, it means you you probably have a good grasp of the content in that card or you've you've sufficiently learned it. So just a quick recap for the polishing phase. All you have to do is study your Anki deck until you've sufficiently learned it. Then go and pass your exam. Thanks so much for watching this far. If you like this content, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions or feedback, just let me know in the comment section. And thanks so much. See you next time. Bye-bye.